Declaro abierta. I call to order the 34th meeting of the third committee of the 71st session of the General Assembly. I invite the committee to continue its consideration of agenda item 68, promotion and protection of human rights, sub items B and C. And distinguished delegates, colleagues, Your Excellencies, I am pleased to welcome our distinguished guest speakers, Mr. Miklos Haratsi, on my right, a special rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Belarus. Ms. Sheila Ketharuth, Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Eritrea and member of the former Commission of Inquiry on the Situation of Human Rights in Eritrea. And Mr. Michael Link, Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in the Palestinian Territories occupied since 1967. I would like to remind delegations to keep their interventions to two minutes during the interactive dialogue. We did have a problem this morning. And we have to manage our time until 6 o'clock. Concerned countries will be allotted 8 to 10 minutes as per established uh, practice for uh, responses to the reports. I'd like to invite the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Belarus, Mr. Miklos Haratsi, to report to the Committee. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Um, I have the honor to present you my report about the situation of human rights in Belarus. This time it focuses on human rights in the context of electoral processes in Belarus, but it extends also to other issues. The events that triggered my choice are the presidential election in October last year and the parliamentary elections held September this year. These two elections had within one year have been looked at carefully by many members of the worldwide human rights community and regarded as indicators for any development in the situation of fundamental freedoms in Belarus. The presidential election yielded another five-year mandate to the incumbent of the last 20 years and um, the release of the political prisoners of the on the eve of that vote and the absence of violence during the presidential election October last year had raised hopes among partners of Belarus that there would be an improvement in the general human rights situation in the country and that the conduct of the parliamentary elections this year would contribute to such change. Unfortunately, I can inform you only very few positive developments. Certainly good news for the general human rights framework is the issuance three days ago um, of a national action plan to implement recommendations by selected treaty bodies. So is the signing um, of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. While the former political prisoners, uh, with several former presidential candidates among them, have not been given back their political rights, not even at the occasion of the parliamentary elections, they were held without law enforcement violence, which had marred previous elections. During the campaign period, the possibilities for candidates to use the public space have marginally widened, which is also good news, but unlike in the media, where the scope of access by candidates remained extremely limited. Very much to my regret, the positive signs have not been followed by any concrete steps to either change 
the entrenched oppressive legal framework or modify the restrictive practices of the state apparatus. In fact, the smooth-looking conduct of the parliamentary elections in September should not eclipse the underlying remaining unchanging systemic violations. The election to parliament of one member of an opposition party and of one independent cultural activist may look as a change, and it certainly is, given that Belarus had been since 20 years the only parliament in Europe without any presence of any opposition. However, the guided nature of this token um, presence of opposition makes it rather a selection by government, only underlining the state apparatus is continued, um, that the state apparatus continues to decide the outcome. My finding together with those of the Office uh, for Security and Cooperation in Europe the, uh, and its Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights show that the nominal modifications made at the margins of the electoral process did not affect the fully government-controlled character of the elections. There was no equal access to media, as, men as I mentioned. The turnout was not verifiable and the vote count proved to be neither transparent nor honest. The Central Election Commission, a permanent body, has had the same chairperson for 20 years now. The composition of all electoral bodies is uh, continually decided in Belarus either by the president or by local state authorities. The Central Election Commission introduced um, at the occasion of this election a concept of political qualities uh, for the selection of candidates to election commissions with the criteria to be supportive of the government's policies. On a more general note, my report describes a legal and administrative system of restriction of human rights which by its mere existence cannot be conducive to meaningful elections. The fundamental freedoms of expression and of the media continue to be violated as, for example, Belarus is still the only country uh, in the whole of Europe without privately owned nationwide media. The state media were used as a platform for the candidates supporting the government. I would like to cite the situation of Edward Palchis, who has been in prison since May this year on made-up grounds, but in reality, because of his political views expressed in his internet blog. His incarceration ended a short period, less, less than a number of months, during which there had been no political prisoners in Belarus. Unchanged is the suppression of the freedoms of association and assembly. To form an association or political party or just to hold any gathering needs first to be approved by the state authorities. The, ex the executive branch is fully entitled to discretionally permit or cancel any occurrence of public life. If no authorization is obtained, the activity is deemed criminal de jure and the criminalization of participation, actual participation in gatherings, associations, or in media activities, um, which have not been preliminarily permitted, can become a de facto crime whenever the authorities decide so. This three-layer system of arbitrariness in um, managing human rights, a permission-based public life, a non-permissive state apparatus and the criminalization of unpermitted civic activities has not changed. 
The result is that Belarus hasn't had a single new party authorized in the last 16 years, despite frequent, frequent requests by the concerned parties to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, Despite the numerous recommendations made over the last 10 years by the various UN human rights mechanisms, including the UPR during its first two cycles, there are no substantial changes um, detectable in the situation of human rights in Belarus and the political will to engage in either a comprehensive or a piecemeal reform is still missing. The various attempts of the international community to constructively address the human rights situation in Belarus remain ignored. In another, sorry, neglect of the human rights system, Belarus has gone on with executions, still remaining the only state in Europe that applies death penalty. The country this year has again disdained the procedure that was pending before the Human Rights Committee regarding uh, death penalty judgment uh, sentence. There was widespread expectation that the President, within the actually limitless range of his powers, uh, would commute death sentences into life sentences or order a freeze on executions or introduce a legal moratorium, but he has not decided so. I urge once again Belarus to put an end to capital punishment without further delay. Madam Chairperson, I reiterate my call towards the authorities to engage with my mandate, which is a still missing element in the human rights uh, conduct of the country. I am ready to do that even in an incremental way. I am ready to assist the government just as I have assisted the civil society, uh, their organizations and the human rights defenders, which thankfully have continued working in Belarus, confronting a very forbidding environment. I would like to conclude my statement by paying tribute to their resilience. Thank you for your attention. I should like to thank the distinguished special rapporteur for his statement. And uh, I now open the floor for any comments and questions to the special rapporteur. The floor goes to the distinguished delegation of Venezuela on behalf of the non-aligned countries. It is my honor to be able to address you on behalf of the NAM movement. The heads of state and government of the non-aligned movement reassert the primordial importance uh, uh, that the movement gives to the protection and promotion of uh, human rights and universal commitments to ensure the observance and protection of all uh, fundamental human rights. Uh, uh, this is in accordance with the UN Charter, other basic uh, legal instruments as appropriate in international law. We, moreover, state that all human rights, including uh, the right to development, are universal, inalienable, indivisible, uh, uh, independent, and interrelated, uh, and issues pertaining to um, human rights must be looked at in a global context, in a constructive way, avoiding confrontation, politicization, um, being selective so that there is dialogue that is fair and on a basis of equality that is objective, that respects uh, national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The principle of non-interference um, in uh, state's internal affairs, impartiality and transparency and guiding principles bearing in mind the political, historical, social, religious and cultural features of every country. And here we wish again uh, to express our unambiguous uh, uh, consternation at the flagrant uh, violation of uh, human rights and the impediments preventing enjoyment of uh, human rights as well as uh, violence that have been 
detailed. The heads of state of the NAM movement wish to refer to paragraph 108 of the outcome document of the 17th summit of the NAM held in Margarita Island in Venezuela in September this year. The function, the role of the Human Rights Council as a subsidiary body, something has happened to the sound, I regret to say. The speaker's microphone. No, the... Venezuela en nombre del movimiento de países no alineados y su intervención completa será por supuesto introducida en, nuestra, en la página de la comisión. O, a, ofrezco ahora el uso de la palabra. I, I uh, thank the speaker and I tell you that um, uh, your, statement will, your statement will be available in its entirety. I now give the floor to the uh, delegation of Belarus. Thank you, Madam Chair. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, during the discussion with member states in the Third Committee last week, pointed out that access to country mandates by states can be ensured through contacts on a bilateral basis. We fully agree with this approach, with the sole exception that dialogue with states on this item should begin before the creation of such a mandate and not after it has been set up. Belarus once again would like to state that the country does not need a special rapporteur and recall upon not wasting money for flimsy mandates and rather using them for more important issues. As practice has shown, these country discussions can only whip up controversy and can divert resources and overburden our agenda. The latest report of the Special Rapporteur does not contain anything new or substantive. And in fact, it can be explained quite easily. There is no need or context which would require any type of urgent attention towards Belarus on the part of the international community. The situation regarding human rights in Belarus is comparable with the situation in those countries which initiated the mandate of a Special Rapporteur. For this is just enough to take a look at the results of the Universal Periodic Review of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Belarus has repeatedly stated that it is open for dialogue on any issues in the area of human rights and constantly conducts such a dialogue with other partners. As a result of a meeting of the President of the Republic of Belarus with the High Commissioner for Human Rights in Belarus, there has been a adopted a national plan on human rights which is based on the recommendations of the UPR and treaty bodies, and this was mentioned today. But this information has been distorted. We are parties to all treaty bodies. Unfortunately, the, review, the views of, of observers have not been taken into account, and we have not seen to it that there is a reflection of efforts made in the country to improve the practice of holding elections, including the recommendations of the ODIHR of the OSCE on improving the electoral process. We recall that the Special Rapporteur, that there had has been a change in the electoral process in Belarus, which was introduced in 2015 and not 2014, as was stated in the report. In conclusion, we would like to say that we, the Belarusians, do not need to be taught from abroad how to live after our sacrifices in the Second World War, after the Chernobyl catastrophe. We have been able to build a strong state. Today, Belarus is proud of its country and the policy of its state which is designed to ensure a high level, a standard of living for its citizens, which is an international recognized fact. And we, will con we would like to continue to reaffirm that we will continue to remain a contributor to peace and agreement. Thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished delegation of Belarus, and I remind all speakers that the the versions of the speeches in their entirety will be available on the committee's website. So you may uh, rest assured that other members will be able to consult them. And I now give the floor to the distinguished delegate from the U.S. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The United States expresses its appreciation for the continued reporting of the Special Rapporteur. The United States calls upon the government of Belarus to cooperate with the Special Rapporteur and grant him a country visit as soon as possible. His important work supporting civil society and providing recommendations for electoral reform in Belarus must continue. The release of six political prisoners in August 2015 was a positive step. 
we welcomed the peaceful conduct of the presidential election in October 2015 and parliamentary elections in September. Still, the elections fell short of Belarus's international obligations and commitments to free and fair elections. As we have done before, we encourage the government of Belarus to undertake serious reform of its election law and processes in line with the OSCE, ODIHR, and Council of Europe Venice Commission recommendations. As recommended by these bodies, electoral reforms should include registering new political parties, broadening membership on electoral commissions, and increasing transparency in the ballot count. We remain concerned that the government continues to impose restrictions on opposition parties, civil society, and independent media. We are also concerned that the government continues to restrict the right of peaceful assembly by arbitrarily denying permission to organize events and sentencing those who participate in unsanctioned peaceful rallies to pay large fines. We urge the government of Belarus to repeal Article 193.1 of the Criminal Code, which criminalizes the activities of unregistered organizations. What immediate steps could Belarus take to improve the operating environment for civil society organizations in the country? Thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished delegate of the U.S. and I now give the floor to the distinguished delegate of the Czech Republic. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Czech Republic aligns itself with the intervention to be made on behalf of the European Union. Mr. Special Rapporteur, the Czech Republic thanks uh, you for your comprehensive report on the human rights situation in Belarus. We welcome the extension of your mandate and regret that Belarus has not yet decided to grant its full cooperation <coughs> to the Office of Special Reporter and other special procedures. Understandingly, your report focuses mainly on electoral processes. The Czech Republic has welcomed Belarusian pledges to cooperate with the civil society and international organization on the matters related to electoral processes, and we have seen limited progress, especially when it comes to the treatment of domestic and international observers. However, we are sorry to hear that fundamental problems still prevail, such as the non-transparent counting procedures and non-pluralistic composition of election commissions. In compliance with your recommendation, we urge the authorities to support national non-governmental organizations that carry out electoral monitoring and to grant domestic observers full access to all key moments of the electoral processes. Mr. Special Rapporteur, the Czech Republic shares your understanding that political parties, association, and civil society organizations must be able to conduct mm -hmm. free campaigns and meetings. Therefore, we share your advice to Belarus to eliminate the permission-based registration procedure for assembly and to facilitate and protest spontaneous assemblies. Furthermore, we believe that Belarus should also ease its restrictive approach to registration of civil society organizations and political parties, thus enabling its citizens to freely participate in public life, which is precondition for free and fair elections. As regards the exercise of the right of to stand for election, I should like to thank the distinguished delegation of the Czech Republic uh, for those words and your understanding as well. And I now give the floor to the distinguished delegate of Cuba. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. The international community has entrusted the United Nations with the responsibility of monitoring human rights throughout the world and uh, of focusing on those areas where there is clear a uh, flagrant violation of human rights. Uh, the mandate uh, for Belarus uh, directly uh, affects this and uses the lofty goal of protecting human rights as a pretext to push forward the politically motivated agendas. The report was brought to this committee uh, to document the existence in Belarus of a human rights situation which is deserving of international intention it is bereft of any information justifying uh, the mandate being maintained. Uh, political questioning is there instead, uh, referring to key institutions of the political system of this country. The form uh, and functioning of this falls solely to Belarus. We feel that objectivity, impartiality and non-selectivity should be observed in uh, treating human rights. We should observe the various uh, historic, uh, cultural and religious heritages of each country and also bear in mind the consensus reached by the international community. Uh, 
whereby uh, democracies uh, share uh, common features, but there is no one single model of a democracy. Uh, Cuba wishes uh, once again to uh, reject uh, this sort of politicized uh, uh, action, which have no support uh, when it comes to invoking human rights and uh, merely adversely affect the analysis of this very important issue. Thank you very much. I should like to thank the distinguished delegate of Cuba, and I now give the floor to the distinguished delegation of Norway. Thank you. Norway welcomes the report of the, on the situation of human rights in Belarus by the Special Rapporteur. We commend his efforts to fulfill his mandate despite being denied access to the country. Once again, we call on the government of Belarus to recognize the mandate of the Special Rapporteur and extend to him their full cooperation. Last autumn, we welcomed the release of six political prisoners. We hope that this might signal a new willingness on the part of Belarusian authorities to address pressing human rights concerns, including linked to elections. To encourage further steps in the right direction, Norway joined the EU in discontinuing most of our restrictive measures against several Belarusian individuals and companies. Unfortunately, our hopes have so far not proven to be justified. It is a sad irony that one day after most of the EU restrictive measures had been lifted, a new death sentence was handed down. We deplore the continued application of capital punishment. We reiterate our call on Belarus to introduce an immediate moratorium on the death penalty as a first step towards its abolition. Thank you. I should like to thank uh, Norway for those words. And I now give the floor to the Russian Federation. Madam Chairman, thank you. Russia does not recognize the mandate of the Special Rapporteur on um, Belarus or the resolution which was adopted in this regard. We believe that the invention of this Belarusian problem is unlawful uh, and which in, is an exaggeration. And also the report submitted to us today, which does not allow us to talk about uh, of, of any impartiality on the part of the Rapporteur or any facts and, and recommendations. We continue to not to understand on what basis the rapporteur calls violations the systematic ones in Belarus. They are, this is, it's, uh, it's entirely unacceptable to try to have a special rapporteur interfere with the electoral process of a sovereign state, in this case Belarus. The fact that there would be in no justification not to to work with the rapporteur and with the special institutions in Belarus on the whole. And they have worked, in fact, with other organizations involved in human rights. And they have shown that they want to cooperate constructively with, with these bodies, including during the course of the recent visit in May, when Belarus quite clearly showed that it was willing to strengthen national human rights topics. We believe that the resolution on a mandate which was given for politicized reasons is a violation of the Human Rights Declaration and the special procedures without the support of Minsk cannot give any positive results. In essence, it is a useless waste of resources which Rusa por su intervención y ofrezco el uso de la palabra a la distinguida delegación de Lituania. The intervention to be made on behalf of the European Union. Mr. Special Rapporteur, on behalf of Lithuania, allow me to reiterate our support for your mandate and thank you for your valuable work and the comprehensive report that focused this year on parliamentary elections held in Belarus. Mr. Special Rapporteur, we remain concerned that despite some improvements in the electoral processes, and the violence-free character of the elections held in Belarus, the systematic shortcomings on the right of freedom of opinion and expression, as well as freedom of assembly and association still persist. We believe that political parties and independent candidates should be able to conduct free campaigns, express their ideas, and hold political debates, especially so that younger generations could be able to contribute to the development of political culture. In this regard, we would like to ask Mr. Special Rapporteur to express his views on how international community could contribute to the development of general political culture in Belarus. 
Lithuania FOMO uh, regrets that Belarus has not implemented election-related recommendations and addressed shortcomings identified in the report of, a, of your office, OECE, Office for Democratic Institution and Human Rights, and the United Nations Human Rights Mechanism. Lithuania once again encourages the Belarusian authorities to implement uh, the provided recommendations in the area of democratic reforms and ensure that electoral legislation is in line with international human rights standards. At the same time, we would like to call the Belarusian authorities to cooperate closely and extensively with the Office of Special Rapporteur. Mr. Special Rapporteur, we would like to ask is there any progress in your dealings with the official Minsk and what measures should be taken in order to sustain a meaningful dialogue with Belarusian authorities? I thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished delegation of Lithuania, and I now give the floor to the distinguished delegation of Germany. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Germany wants to align its statement, uh, align itself with the statement that to be delivered by the European Union. Mr. Special Rapporteur, we would like to thank you for your excellent report. Germany strongly supports your mandate. In recent months, there were some positive developments in Belarus. We welcome the release of political prisoners and appreciate the government's willingness to engage in dialogue on human rights issues with the European Union and the OSCE. However, we remain deeply worried about a variety of aspects, including violations of labor rights, especially for those working in the agricultural and forestry sector. Civil society, including activists, lawyers, and journalists, continue to suffer from repression aggravated by a climate of impunity. We are also worried about the country still carrying out the death penalty, as the last country in Europe. We call on the government of Belarus to continue on its path towards more dialogue and to commit to real improvements of the human rights situation on the ground. We encourage the government of Belarus to carry out the election reforms recommended by the OSCE. Considering the positive signs in recent months, we hope that the government of Belarus will fulfill its international human rights obligations and improve the lives of those currently suffering from human rights violations, especially in the civil society. This should be accompanied by a moratorium on the death penalty and electoral reforms. Mr. Special Rapporteur, how do you evaluate the possibilities of improvements on the ground in view of the government's willingness to engage more in dialogue about human rights on the international level? Do you see new opportunities, for example, for civil society and for those suffering from violations of labor rights? Thank you very much. I should like to thank the distinguished delegation of Germany for those words, and I now give the floor to the distinguished delegation of Poland. Thank you, Madam Chair. Poland aligns itself with the statement deliver, to be delivered by the European Union and would like to offer some additional comments. Mr. Special Rapporteur, we would like to thank you for all your valuable work and the comprehensive report you have presented. Mr. Harasti, we note with appreciation some, some positive uh, developments by Belarusian government, such as releasing political prisoners, cooperation with OSC, ODIR, as well re as re-establishment of human rights dialogue between the EU and Belarus, and work on the National Action Plan on Human Rights. Nevertheless, we remain concerned by your opinion, Mr. Harasti, that the human rights violations in Belarus continue to be of systemic and systematic nature, particularly with regard to fundamental human rights and freedoms, such as freedom of speech and media independence, or freedom of association and assembly. Mr. Harasti, we have the following question. We would like to ask you about your opinion on the most effective measures the international community can take to encourage the government of Belarus to address multiple shortcomings in electoral system. You outline in your report serious concerns over the transparency of registration process, equal access to the media, and fair vote count. What is, in your opinion, the biggest challenge in this regard? How would you describe the space of activity of the civil society organizations in the context of electoral process in Belarus? Has the situation changed in this respect over the course of your mandate? Finally, Mr. Special Rapporteur, let me assure you about our continuous support for your efforts to report on and monitor the human rights situation in Belarus. Thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished delegation of Poland for those words, and I now give the floor to the distinguished delegation of Turkmenistan. I thank Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. 
We have carefully studied the report of the special reporter on the situation of human rights in the Republic of Belarus. We believe the situation in Belarus does not require urgent attention or monitoring by the Human Rights Council, and further prolongation of his mandate is meaningless. Belarus uh, does cooperate with the UN human rights bodies and demonstrate its will to comply with its human rights obligations. Uh, Belarus is a party to most of the international human rights instruments. Uh, in compliance with its international obligations, uh, Belarus regularly submits national periodic reports for consideration by treaty bodies. In September 2015, uh, Belarus signed the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Turkmenistan welcomes the continuous effort of Belarus in its uh, constructive cooperation with human rights uh, treaty bodies and other UN agencies, as well as with the uh, European Union and the Council of Europe, by holding joint events on implementation of the provisions of international human rights treaties in judicial practice, such as promotion and protect of the human rights of persons with disabilities and functioning and establishment of human rights institutions. I thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished uh, delegate, delegate of Turkmenistan, and I now give the floor to the distinguished delegation of Kyrgyzstan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We support the steps taken by Belarus in dealing with the problems of human rights, and we welcome what was mentioned in the report of the, the Special Rapporteur on the situation with regard to human rights in Belarus and the peaceful atmosphere which took place in the elections which took place in October of 2015, September of 2016. We also approve of the parliamentary system development in the country, which shows a variety of political forces in that legislative body. And we also emphasize the consistency of Belarus in carrying out all of its obligations under international United Nations bodies. We be it important that there be consultations between the Republic of Belarus in the civil sphere since May of 2016, which, which are designed to work out a joint program of action on human rights. In conclusion, we point out that only a dialogue and constructive uh, interaction uh, and the country's respect for country's specific cultural uh, features and geographical location can help solve such difficult problems. Thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished delegation of Kyrgyzstan. And I now give the floor to the Democratic Republic of Laos. My delegation would like to illustrate our view that a country specific human rights resolution would not help us to address human rights issues. We firmly believe that the UPR mechanism is only an appropriate forum to discuss and review human rights situation in any country on an equal basis. Therefore, the UPR process should continue to reserve as the most con constructive dialogue on human rights issues in any country. In this connection, my delegation call on the international community to continue positive dialogue and engagement with Belarus. We also en encourage Belarus to continue to cooperate relation with the human rights mechanism to achieve its international obligation. Thank you. I should like to thank the distinguished delegation of Laos for that uh, statement. And I now give the floor to the distinguished delegate of Switzerland. Madam, La Madam Chair, first I would like to thank the Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights in Belarus for his excellent report and for his perseverance in the face of the Belarusian government, which thus far has not responded to his request to cooperate. Switzerland hails the analysis made by the Special Rapporteur on the relationship between elections and protection of human rights, and it agrees with his conclusion on the intrinsic link between any democratic election and respect for human rights, in particular civil and political rights. Mr. Special Rapporteur, your lucid analysis of the parliamentary elections in Belarus concludes that this process is far from meeting the criteria for a truly democratic election. In such a context, 
in your view, is there a risk that the organization of elections might have a counterproductive effect on the production of human rights in the sense that elections give the illusion of a certain respect for human rights, which are actually being violated in practice? In your report, you welcome the fact that there was no violence or with regard to the elections in 2015 and 2016, while attributing the situation to long-lasting repression for any political activities which might be critical towards the government and the fear of destabilization. As you see it, this so-called peace, is it not a relatively fragile one? How do you judge the risk of instability in the long term if the population is not in a position to express its opinion freely? Mr. Special Rapporteur, you believe that the election to Parliament of two opposition party members was orchestrated by the authorities. Do you believe that they nevertheless have some level of influence and that their position might constitute a glimmer of hope for those who still do not feel themselves represented by their government? Finally, in your, the recommendations which should be to made to other protagonists in Belarus in your report, Delegación de Suiza por su intervención y concedo ahora el uso de la palabra a la distinguida delegación de Ecuador.